From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Jason Stiff has our Tuesday forecast, plus a new hot springs may be popping up in Montana. But first, our top story. A man is in custody in the Lake County Jail facing murder and attempted murder charges after three people were shot at a home southeast of Big Fork Sunday night. MTN Sean Wells was at the scene of the crime and has the very latest. I'm here in Ferndale, we're just a mile down this road. A deadly shooting happened Sunday night, leaving one person killed and two people injured with gunshot wounds. My mom was shot in front of the shop here and she had drug herself clear behind the house to protect herself from Matt. Matthew Vitek of Big Fork is in custody in the Lake County Jail facing murder and attempted murder charges after being accused of shooting and killing Tammy Jordan and leaving two other people with gunshot wounds. He was using 45 ACP rounds. He was aiming to kill and he was trying to kill. Tim Kraft tells MTN News that both his mother and father were trying to help Tammy Jordan when Vitek shot and killed Jordan and turned and shot both of his parents in the chest. He says Jordan was a tenant at an adjacent home on his family's property and was one of his mother's best friends. Feeling like I'm in a movie, like it's fake. Like I don't, like, I'm waiting for Ashton to jump out and tell me it's fake, but. Detectives were at the property Monday morning gathering information. Kraft says Vitek was an ex-boyfriend of Jordan's and was involved in previous domestic disputes. Kraft says his parents are currently in stable condition. The case remains under investigation by the Lake County Sheriff's Office. We will continue to follow this story and keep you updated as more information develops. In Ferndale, Sean Wells, MTN News. The Billings Airport was covered in graffiti early Monday morning. It appears to reference Crispus Attucks, a historical figure who is considered the first person killed in the American Revolution. Police arrested Jared Saffold. He's now in jail, facing possible charges of felony arson, criminal mischief, and assault. Police believe Saffold was going to start a fire in the entryway, but a local taxi driver made sure that didn't happen. MTN's David J has his incredible story. The cab driver who kept the fire from being lit says it was all a reaction, and in the future he'd respond the same way in a similar situation. He says he knows the risks and said he was trying to keep everybody safe at the airport. It doesn't matter if it would have been my 105th night on the job. I would have still done the same thing. It wouldn't have even mattered if I had been on the job. I would have just done the same thing. Lucas Smith had been working as a taxi cab driver for only five days when he came upon a man vandalizing the airport grounds. The suspect had already written on the building and broke glass doors when he tried to set a fire inside the airport. That's when Smith stepped into action. When I see something like that, I don't even think about myself, man. I think about the others. They're, we're all neighbors. We're all in this together. We're all fighting the same fight. We're all dealing with the same struggle. Smith works for the Billings Taxi Company and went up to the airport to wait for a couple of passengers around midnight. He was inside door three when he recognized what was happening. We are a 24-7 operation, but uh, it, was, it was during a period of time when we didn't have a lot of activity in the terminal. Smith ran to Enterprise Car Rental and asked the ladies who were working to call security. And then he spotted the man trying to do more damage. Trying to get it all lit on fire with his sock, barefoot, shoe was over there. And I stepped out in front of him and I swept everything with my foot. The lighter fluid, the lighter, the sock, everything went flying. Smith said he was tackled, got the man in a chokehold, and then chased the man while police arrived. He responded as if it was instinct, but later thought about what had happened. I came home and I almost started crying. That could have been my life. But it's okay, I was willing to risk it. That was my choice, and I will do it every single time. The suspect, Jared Saffold, was booked into the Yellowstone County Jail on possible charges of felony arson, criminal mischief, and assault, according to police. Smith says he wanted to stop the situation, but not hurt the man. I don't wish bad on anybody. I really hope it's just something that he can work with and he can get the help that he needs. In Billings, David J, MTN News.
The Helena Police Department has announced a new program aimed at helping criminal investigations. The security camera mapping program allows community members within city limits to sign up with HPD to allow access to exterior security cameras. The camera will be added to a database which officers can reference during an investigation to see if a camera captured any evidence. This database is designed to allow officers to spend less time tracking down cameras and more time investigating a potential crime. If I have an incident in a particular location, I can look at the map and I can say, okay, um, this has three or four different cameras in this general location. Let's go to those places first because we know they're there. Participation in this program is 100% voluntary and folks can back out at any time. Representative Matt Rosendale is hinting at a Senate run. The Republican representing Montana's Eastern District says on social media he's heavily considering running for the seat currently held by Democrat John Tester. Rosendale claims he's heard from many Montanans and state legislators that want him in the race. If he did join, he would first face off against Tim Sheehy in the Republican primary. The deadline to file for the Senate race is March 11, 2024. Montana's playoff run continues this Saturday in Missoula as the Grizzlies are set to host the North Dakota State Bison. It's a semifinal matchup Grizz fans won't want to miss. We looked into the ticket situation for you and playoff tickets for season ticket holders became available Saturday. If you are a season ticket holder, you have until today at noon to purchase your same seats. And meanwhile, tickets open for the general public this evening at 5 p.m. All reserved seats are $35. The University of Montana is again offering 3,000 free tickets to students. That means for a second week in a row, UM students do not have to pay out of pocket to cheer on their school as the Grizz look to advance to the FCS National Championship. Uptown Butte has some very cool art on display. In fact, very cold art. Dozens of ice sculptures were carved by both professional and amateur artists Saturday during Butte's 23rd annual ice sculpture contest hosted by Main Street Uptown. The event is held to bring people uptown to view the ice sculptures being made and to encourage shopping at the many local businesses. This year's grand prize went to Clayton and Connor Hagem for their mountain goat sculpture at Steele's Furniture. And this holiday travel season is expected to be a busy one. Triple A expects more than 115 million Americans to travel at least 50 miles or more from home. That's a 2.2% increase from last year. The busy travel period starts the weekend before Christmas and lasts through New Year's Day. Most people are expected to drive to their destinations. And that's a look at some of the day's top stories. And good Tuesday afternoon as we take a live look at our statewide Doppler radar. It hasn't been this devoid of rain and snow for a long time. However, it's not completely clear sky for everyone. We've had a lot of clouds around Sydney and Baker. Then on the western half of the state, plenty of low clouds and areas of fog around Butte as well as Bozeman. Helena, very foggy. Lots of clouds and fog around Missoula and Kalispell, but not much precipitation. A couple of areas of mist, and that's really about it. Temperatures trying to rise on this December day. It's up to 42 degrees right now in Jordan. 38 degrees with more sunshine and billings, but not much sun to be seen in the western third to western half of the state. Our seven-day forecast coming up in just a few minutes.